Hey guys, so I forgot to film an intro for this video, but I'm just gonna be taking you around my house to show you my entire collection of plants. I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think. I will actually only have one plant in here and it's a little bit, I think I overwatered it. I think that's what all this yellowing is and like dying is. I don't know if maybe this is my cue to like chop it back and start fresh. If I end up doing that, I will, you know, do a little vlog of the process or something, but yeah, I way overwatered that. Prime example of what overwatering looks like in a plant, it starts getting yellow at the base and will slowly work its way down the vine until it's killed off everything it needs to kill off to survive. I probably should just chop it to save the plant. It's grown a lot. That is huge. Do you remember it was like here when yeah. I moved it? It's because we, we don't use the bathtub very often. Yeah. That's a neon pothos. Now to our bedroom. We'll start on my side of the bed. Here we have, oh, tell me when you're ready. Sorry. So this is my side of the bed, welcome. On my nightstand, I have a couple of plants. A Florida ghost, a philodendron Florida ghost, I think. Mine is not very ghostly anymore. The leaves come in pretty dark, but I'm hoping this little grow light is going to help them lighten up a little bit how they're supposed to be. Here is a McCode's Patola Jewel Orchid. Really pretty in direct light like this. It like almost glows, looks pretty neon. And moving to the windowsill, the only plant I have here at the moment is my Dracaena Reflexa. Kind of a weird one, growing a little bit weird. Yeah, I maybe should move it like to the middle. How's that? Good? Yeah, it's survived a lot because Reiner likes to mess with the plants that sit on the windowsill. <laughs> and it's like the last plant on the windowsill, so it's, <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, to withstand him. So on the other side of this window is my variegated money tree. Tell us about the bookshelf it's on. It's books. These are some books that we have. Ryan, what's your favorite book on that stack? The Middle East and Modern World History. Oh, okay. Back on top of that little book stand, I have a Burroughs Tell, which some of you may remember from long ago, I found two little Burroughs Tell like leaves, these little plump things in another plant I bought. This is what it has turned into. Wow. Do you like it? Yeah, they look like something you'd want to eat. It looks kind of like candy. It does. Just a little low maintenance thing. Here in the corner, we have Monstera Albo. Maybe I should turn it so you can see a little better. Is that yeah, better? The light's kind of just really strong. Is it better time. to turn it oh, off? Oh yeah, it's a Should light. I redo that whole section then? No. This is my Monstera Albo. <gasps> which has a lot of Monstera Albo little propagations I took because I wanted a really full, super full plant. And I would love for it to like take over this whole corner, but I have high hopes because everything is growing in pretty quickly. We have quite a few new leaves happening down here and up there. That's kind of a weird shaped leaf. It is but a weird shaped leaf, but it looks cool. Yeah, look at this one back here, the color on that one. Oh, that one's nice. Yeah. This but, is probably my favorite plant. Out of all the plants, this might be my favorite. It's like fun because how different all the leaves are, huh? Yeah, totally. And it's like exciting every time there's a new leaf. Yeah, because you're like, oh, how awesome is this one gonna be? Yeah, totally. Another really exciting plant to me, Passiflora trifasciata. If you have one of these and you're wondering if you're giving it the right amount of light, this side is when it's in a little bit lower light, you can see the leaves are like, I don't know, a little more immature looking, a little bit more spaced out and definitely lighter green than all of the leaves on this side, which definitely look more like duck footed or dinosaur footed and a lot darker, like more vibrant. Oh my gosh, and these ones are actually kind of blushing. So yeah, they'll blush and be darker like that if it's getting enough light. But if you're not sure, that's kind of, can kind of see a difference there. <sighs> yeah, I really- That one's fun because we get to watch it grow up the wall. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting to see like, it feels like it grows fast, crazy. Like you could almost watch it like in real time. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's gonna strangle you at night. I know. Or probably, it would... probably me, because you're trying to collect that life insurance. Yeah, whatever it takes. <laughs> Ryan built this. Have we talked about it? I think I have a few times. But... Maybe a long time ago. For those of you who didn't think it would last, I proved you wrong. I'm just kidding, I don't know if anyone said that, but if you were thinking it, it's a, it's a good one. Anyway, on top of it, I store a lot of plants. So on this side, Philodendron rugosum. I think I'm gonna move this one into my grow tent because whatever I do, it just always looks kind of weird. It's moving away from the light. 
but the other room I had it in, it was too little light. Next to that is this Hoya Gunungading, probably one of the more beautiful plants in my collection, if you ask me. I just love the leaf shape. Beautiful. What is a non-plant person's perspective on that? Um, it honestly doesn't look like anything special to me. Really? But if it made it on top of the, the dresser, then it must be something good. It really doesn't stand out as like, you're no. not like, wow. I, I wouldn't look at that and go, wow. Oh, okay. Honestly though, going back, I really like this guy. I really like the character of the board that it's like growing up too. Oh yeah. But, so that's interesting to hear that you're not like too thrilled with it. Yeah, I'm not. I, I mean, I like the whole combination of it, but it's just the plant itself is growing kind of weird. So I just think I need to not have it up here. Gotcha. So I can, we can appreciate it in its full beauty in the grow tent. This is another Hoya growing on a board. Although yeah, not as nice of a board as that one. <laughs> the leaves get these really speckly freckle things that turn pink in the sun. You wipe off the dust. <laughs> Yeah, it's like pretty pink. I have a Syndapsis Silver Cloud. Or no, a Syndapsis Silver Hero. Again with the silvery plants. And next to that is a Hoya Rotundifolia. No, Rotundiflora. Here's my Stefania, erect Stefania Erecta. It's been this way since probably June. It started popping this thing out and then it just hasn't made any progress since then. So where this kind of is my first codex experience. I'm not sure if I need to put it in a dormancy and then maybe it'll do better next year. If you have any recommendations, I would appreciate it to keep that plant alive. But up here is a happy story. This is my philodendron postazanum. Had this bad boy for so long and it just was stagnant until I moved it in front of these grow lights. And now it's living its best life. I think this needs pretty high light. Got a new leaf coming in here, and I love how big the leaves get. That's so pretty. It's just kind of in a cover pot situation, so maybe I should repot it and it might really take off. This one, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. This is an Ascenanthus Thai pink. I love the chubby leaves, and when these things bloom, they're so pretty. They're really hot pink. Last plant on the dresser is Opuntia something. But I think it's a little cutie. Kind of a little weirdo but I like having a lot of different shaped plants all together. So then it looks a little more jungly. And then the last plants in our bedroom are on Ryan's side of the bed, my Tephrocactus geometricus. Uh, this one is another one that is going to need to go dormant. So I've been kind of cutting back on watering a little bit. So it'll drop these guys and go into dormancy and then hopefully grow a lot bigger next growing season. And over here, this is a Monstera adansonii wide form. I will say this is very tolerant of low light because it gets hardly any light. This is the lowest power grow light you can buy from Hero Aquatics and it's getting like residual light from that. So pretty low light growing still very well and looks happy even though it probably isn't. That's probably not enough light for it. Hmm. Oh, and, and Ryan made this crate for me. Or he had a student make this crepe for me. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> it's a cute little plant stand. Yeah, that's our room. All of our room plants. The best looking plant in this bathroom, honestly, probably this whole upstairs is this one, Upright Lemon Lime Philodendron. It's getting so big. Look at how freaking neon those leaves are. I don't know, looking like it's gonna take up over this corner, which was the goal when I moved it here. Maybe a little bit too big for the bathroom, but it's doing so well there, I'm not like gonna move it and mess that up. On the other side of the sink is a ficus umbellata. Perfect leaf on my ficus umbellata. This planter was actually 3D printed. Do you like it? Yeah, Harley only likes the 3D printed pots that I don't make. No, don't say stuff like that, because then people think I'm mean. <laughs> and I'm not mean, I just need to plan it just kind of slightly hurt my feelings. I No, I like it. I just, here's the planter. Should I show him the planter? Since we're arguing about it, I'm gonna show you. This is the planter he 3D printed, okay? It's awesome. It has a saucer, really great drainage holes. This is not a planter that you can just go throwing plants in willy-nilly. It has to be a very particular plant. And I think the people will agree with me. And now it serves as part of the boys' play 
things. Yeah, because look, it doubles as a stool or a lazy Susan. <laughs> They usually just filled up with their toys and carried around. Yeah. Well, Kai uses it as a stool when they paint, like to sit on. Oh, gotcha. Okay, now back to the regularly scheduled program. This is a Ripsalis. Ripsalis, something starts with a C. Lots of letters in there that I'm not gonna try and pronounce. I love how wild and weird this grows. It's like gonna start poking people on the shoulder. And this is... It's some sort of cactus that I potted upside down in this, in this video. How was that? That was good, actually. <laughs> uh, and it has a random little like basil or, okay, so far everybody thinks it's a basil or a tomato. What's your guess? I guess tomato. What's your guess? I have no clue. Okay. Here, the last plant in this bathroom is my Dracaena marginata which is a little bit sad because I pulled off a lot of the bottom leaves. They were just pretty brown on the edges from being outside this summer. And now it can kind of grow in maybe a little bit healthier. And down here is a random little succulent. Rye kept pulling it out of its pot for some reason, like only this one really. I guess it was all the little succulents, but. So now it's just there until I get around to potting it. Doesn't look great though. Those are all of the plants there. And now we're gonna go. Oh, I love you. I wanna show my Ikea shelf next. Yeah, just, that's almost done. It's just emptying the water out. Oh. So while we wait for that to go away, how much longer do you think this Ikea shelf's gonna be here? I don't know. When are you, how far are you on the? Uh, I don't know. I've been telling them about it for like so many videos now uh, and I'm like, we're going to do it soon. And then we just haven't. Uh, yeah. yeah. Even in just my last one. Did you even watch it? Yeah. I liked it. <laughs> this is probably the next like biggest section of plants I have in my house. I, and I think maybe my favorite one, I think it looks so cute. This is my lead head glass terrarium and it houses a bunch of Labysia species real. Those really bright pink plants there. They're so pretty. Those are just propagations though. And in the back is a kind of sad little Raphidophora cryptantha. I just can never get them to shingle how they're supposed to. Next to it, variegated Hartley philodendron. This is another kind of fun one for me to have grow like the Monstera albo. I get really excited for this one because the variegation is so pretty on the leaves. Moving a shelf up, this is Syngonium erythrophyllum. What I love about this plant is how dark the leaves are. The leaf tops are, but the undersides are really dark, like purplish red, which is really pretty. Yeah, I already, I just have a thing for the Syngonium growth pattern. So that's up there. That's very high up there for me. Next to it is my Thanksgiving cactus which is about to bloom. And this one, when it blooms, they hang on for like eight months. If you want a plant that gets flowers, I this is one I recommend because it's really easy. This is a Syndapsis Silver Splash and it's growing wild. It actually has reached all the way over there to the other side of the shelf. So I haven't wanted to move this one because I would love if it started to grow up the wall a little bit. We'll see what happens or we'll see if we end up with some built-ins before that happens. <laughs> Next row up, I have a couple of Pilia peperomioides. These are a bunch of babies from this plant. And this actually broke a while ago and I just kind of rested it on the dresser to see if it would grow back. And it has, looks kind of weird, but that's kind of cool actually. Don't you think that looks kind of cool? Mm -hmm. In one of my favorite planters I ever thrifted with babies and goats. On the other side of the shelf, I have a little Syndapsis trubii moonlight. This back plant is a Peperomia Hoffmannii, which is one of my favorite hanging plants. I think it's so cute. I would love to hang this somewhere out here a little more open so I could see it better and enjoy it more, but gotten so long. And things started out rough between me and this plant, so I'm really happy that we made it to this point. This is a Philodendron Mykins. Do you remember when we got this? No. Oh, we got it when we were Christmas shopping. Oh, really? Do you remember it? No. Oh, and then the last plant on the shelf Dancing Bones Cactus, which I just love. I think it's so cool and kind of weird. I want to find a new planter for it though. I just haven't found the perfect one, but isn't that cool? What's a non-plant person's perspective on this plant? Um, yeah, it looks odd. I almost feel like you should put it in the satanic planter you have. 
You think that's satanic? I mean, it kind of looks like it. Somebody told me it has people. to do with fertility. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of this season of American Horror Story. Oh. With the, the babies and whatever. Every season of American Horror yeah. Story with the babies. It's true. <laughs> Off to the side is a philodendron in Brazil. I just planted into one of these cheapy Walmart lamps. Ryan and I have had this forever since, since before our, we like, were married. First house. Yeah, our, oh, our wait, apartment. No. No, we got it at that the house on 112 because remember there were there wasn't a lot of lights in the living room. Oh yeah. So, but yeah, we've had it long. The time. second place was that the second place yeah, we ever lived. It was. Anyway, decided to put it to use because it's memorabilia at this point yeah. and yeah, I think it makes a pretty cute plant display thing kind of brings them up a little bit when a lot of my plants are little shorties in the very back it's probably going to be a little dark i'll move this i have my ficus audrey and a bunch of kalanchoe babies i planted into the bottom to kind of hide the soil i i kind of want to repot that one though i'm not loving the kalanchoe ficus combo so that's why i'm kind of hiding it behind that plant <laughs> until i fix it I guess we'll start behind the couch. So the shelf there, this is on the other side of the, well, I guess this is the dividing point of the living room and kitchen, wouldn't you say? Yeah. This is my shelf. If you wanna see a little more in depth, then I recently did a tour of this whole thing. So I'm not gonna show you every single plant in here because that is what that video was for. It is growing in quite nicely. I did this almost exactly a year ago, actually. From here down looks great. That's kind of been a struggle. This is a Hartley philodendron. Doesn't look too great. I had it in pretty low light in mine and Ryan's bathroom a while ago, but I'm hoping that with it here, it'll kind of perk up and maybe start growing a little bit bigger leaves. And then I could chop and kind of start fresh with it and get something that looks a little more like it was meant to grow here. On the other side of the cabinet, I have a golden pothos, which truthfully I just put here to help hide the dilemma I had with the paint peeling off the glass when I built this. This is one of my probably oldest plants in my house and it is a Cebu Blue Pothos. Just kind of climbing all over this little stool here that I thrifted, oh gosh, a long, long time ago in our last house, but I think it looks really good and I think this plant is what kind of kickstarted my love of silver those really silvery blue plants, because I just think they're beautiful in this one, especially so pretty, so tolerant of low light. In front of this sliding glass north facing door, it's actually a covered north. I actually just moved this coral fire aloe here because Rye the other day got mad at me for some reason and picked up the plant, threw it on the floor, the planter shattered and I repotted it here. And I don't know, we'll see if it does well here. I thought it might be cuter than where I had it before and less of a, hazard to my kids <laughs> we'll see and on our little table i have a global green yeah global green pothos wouldn't you say this planter is pretty parisian yeah i thrifted it and that's such an easy plant tolerant of low light also which for this section of my house it is very low light because there really is only this covered north window and low light but these have done pretty decently a little golden pothos just to fill in the plantless space and actually one of my favorite plant display things methods i guess that i've tried is putting these plants on top of the light it really makes it feel more jungle because then there's plants from like top to bottom you know which i don't know i like the feeling of that but i don't know how ryan feels about that i don't care for that does it stress you out? Yeah, a little bit, especially as they grow and get heavier and then one day crash down on us. That's true. I didn't think about that. Maybe I'll have to move them, but for right now, A+. plus. Yeah, I mean, I think it was super, super creative, but it kind of, I'm much more simplistic and like, I would prefer the lamp just by itself. You know what I mean? But I can see how you love it. Yeah, because I just want to feel like I'm living in a jungle yeah, at all no, times. It definitely makes you feel like that a little bit more. Maybe. I have an idea. We should put a shelf across there. Harley loves shelves across walls. Like here, all the way across, because then I could put plants on that. And then I could put a grow light right here and have a little table right here with a couple of plants under it. I could have like a hanging grow light. You don't want to? No, add it to the list. <laughs> that means no. 
<laughs> Prepare yourselves. <laughs> Because there's a little bit of a situation. This is my grow tent. I've been working. Oh, sorry, we need a battery. Oh. Why is it always before the damn grow tent? <laughs> I, don't know. I freaking hate. Welcome to my grow tent. I've been filming a lot of stuff down here because <laughs> I've kind of had an ongoing project where I'm trading all of my plants for mealybugs. Everything on this side hasn't been sprayed, everything on this side has. It's feeling a lot cleaner in here. I wanted to do a little bit of deep cleaning and it's feeling so much more crisp. The most exciting thing in, in here to me right now would be my Monstera Esquilito. Okay, these two leaves left them on because they're the perfect example of what this plant looked like when I moved it outside too quickly. They just fried up. Most of them fell off, they were crispy. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna throw it in the grow tent to rehab it with minimal effort. And it has done obviously really well. It has so many new leaves. Why I like having a grow tent, you can really just throw any plant into it and they'll do well. You don't have to put as much work into providing them the perfect environment because the grow tent does it for you. So that's my grow tent. Now let's move on to our basement bathroom. I am doing some mealybug cleaning. I think the final one for my grow tent. I've got a whole bunch of plants in here that I've already sprayed that need to be moved back to the grow tent. And these are ones waiting to be sprayed. Was that right, right? Yeah. So this is my filming room. <laughs> That's a little bit messy because I have some projects going on, but I do have a few plants in here. So this is my Spathlophyllum peace lily, which I've had for a really long time. I just have it down here because I'm going out of town in a couple days and I want to be able to put enough water to satiate it for the days I'm gone. So that's why that's here. And it is blooming a lot. You can, can you kind of smell it, Ryan? Yeah, I can. Then here we have my bird of paradise, kind of gotten a little mangled over time, like coming in and out of here, moving things around. So I think I need to trim this, maybe repot it sometime soon. Definitely needs a little TLC. For now it's, it's okay. In the terrarium, I have my newest plant, which I'm really excited about. It's Dioscoria discolor. <gasps> the leaves are freaking huge and like have the most satisfying texture, especially this new one. Eee. It's kind of like camouflagey and cool. I'm just keeping it in here isolated because I learned my lesson about not isolating with the mealy bugs. That's that, ow, that's that room. Now we're gonna go to our like office computer room, which is probably the most planty room in my whole house. You guys have seen this one kind of a lot recently because we just put in these lights and I spent a lot of time down here. So we'll start from over here on the windowsill. This is Philodendron Jose Buono. Here's the last leaf it put out. This one's so pretty. It's getting really, really big here. I think it enjoys this spot. And then this is gonna be the newest leaf, which I really want to unfurl. <laughs> I'm fighting the urge. It looks like it's gonna be pretty uh, variegated, just like this last one. It's a good sign. Tells me it's happy. A Crassula ovata, which is doing a lot better now that I repotted it. Uh, it was hydrophobic, not anymore. Here is a random little bowl. I'm gonna take this closer. A bunch of little Sansevieria babies that I've been propagating. Kind of messy looking, but it's fun for me to see all the different little babies popping up all over the place. Here is my booby cactus. This one's kind of a slow grower for me, but I really like it. So I'm hoping it'll do a lot better on this south windowsill. And this is an aloe vera, which was out on my patio this summer and I've rehomed it down here. Here is a little progress update on the baby I showed you when I moved all my plants in for the winter time. Here on the ground is my Raphidophora decursiva. Got this for 20 bucks at a big box store at the beginning of summer and it, wow. It's grown so much. I really like it, and especially these newer, more mature leaves. It just looks so full and has a really good texture, I think. I think this plant is probably one of my best looking plants. Here on this little side table, I have my Philodendron Gigantium Variegated. This is the newest leaf. It's grown a little weird and maybe a little etiolated. If you have one of these, let me know if your stems grow this long. It's just looking a little awkward. <laughs> Next to it is my Syngonium White Butterfly, which is getting like really, really big leaves. I think it's been a lot happier and pushing out a lot of fresh growth pretty quickly. On the ground 
here is my begonia maculata which you guys have seen so many times on my channel unfortunately i was a dum-dum and i accidentally knocked the top a uh, few leaves off of this branch but i just stuck it back into the pot down here and i can't pull it out so i'm assuming it's rooted but i think that'll that was maybe a blessing in disguise because it's going to make it grow in like a lot more full looking i think this way and it already has a growth point popping out here so i think it's gonna shoot a new growth from there anyway and it'll look pretty good so i love the progress on this plant now we're gonna move on to this little dresser which side note we thought about cleaning this little graffiti off and we just can't get ourselves to do it <laughs> that was like the first word that kai ever wrote anyway back to plants here i have euphorbia obesa kind of geometric looking, has a cool pattern going on there. Uh, this is my white princess philodendron. It's getting a little bit top heavy, so I do think I need to pot it into something a little bit taller. So for my succulents, I'm really terrible at remembering the different varieties and stuff, so I'll put the names on screen of them. I recently got this bad boy potted up. This one I really like the growth pattern of. The leaves are like pretty wide and stout compared to most Sansevieria. This is a Sansevieria Cinta, and what I love about this one is actually the striped pattern on each of the leaves. I think I have a thing for minty colored plants. I think that might be what I go for. This is an agave. It has these little pokies on it that are pretty menacing and dangerous looking, and wow, those are actually really pokey. They could take an eye out for sure. Maybe I should move it a little bit further back. <laughs> this is some sort of Haworthia. And and my last little succulent there, little Sansevieria. I think this one's actually probably my favorite. I like the ruffled edges. Behind all of that is a Monstera Thai Constellation, which I'm quite proud of. This is one that historically I've kind of struggled with, but clearly it's doing pretty well because each new leaf it pushes out gets bigger and bigger. So I have high hopes for this. I, I really think the lighting down here is just like super ideal, especially in this section. Something I'm gonna have to deal with probably when I get back from my trip is I have a Passiflora trifasciata vine living right next door to this plant and the tendrils have kind of started to take this over. These can grow so freaking fast and just honestly take over anything if it's in a spot with good light, which this is. So I'm gonna have to do some untangling at some point. Here is my abutilon or flowering maple. This plant usually is pretty top heavy and kind of gets like droopy as it gets bigger up top. A little while ago, I decided to like bonsai it with this wire to grow upwards. So then it just looks a little bit less awkward, you know, and a little less droopy. But yeah, I really like the camouflage leaves and this one blooms so much, like constantly. In front of that, I have a, a homolomina rubescens, the variegated one, which wasn't having very much of the white in it, it until this new leaf. So I'm really excited to see what this next one it's working on will pop out. I do just have this in water, but it seems to be doing okay. So we'll see where that gets before I decide to repot it. This is philodendron adaba puensi. It has so many little babies and growth points. Like it's weird how full this plant looks for such a small compact plant. It is starting to put out some bigger, more of the silvery blue coloration leaves that I really like. So that's exciting. And the back sides are burgundy. Such a pretty plant and it's a really fun one to watch grow. I've enjoyed it a lot more honestly than I kind of thought I would. We have another Sansevieria. Next to it, Crown of Thorns, which is in bloom. This is another very easy one to get to bloom. This one is really spiky, but it looks so pretty from the front. This is a propagation I'm working on. There's nothing really to write home about right now. Ficus altissima. The variegation is getting a lot better now. I pulled off a bunch of leaves to make it this shape. I just always have liked the weird shaped ones, I guess. This is a parlor palm, or no, this is a ponytail palm. It's a little bit unruly. I like it. All right, over here is actually probably one of my favorite plants of all. I know I say that a lot, but this one, I really mean it. It's my sport variegated Monstera which, okay, there's only two leaves. I had to pull a couple of them off, but good news, it does have a little bump right here. So it's got another leaf on the way. And this one has really nice, cool looking variegation. Do you remember when we found this? 
This was the one from Lowe's. Yeah, that's cool, huh? That's big now. Almost killed it a lot of times along the way, but now it's alive. Nice. And it's gonna do good now. This is a little terrarium that I recently put together, I guess a few weeks ago. It's actually growing in a lot more than I thought it would by now. The sphagnum moss, or the mosses especially, and then this little fern. Looks pretty good. Wow, that is so cute. I wish my cameraman was a little more hype about it. <laughs> I'll just try to get a shot, dude. Okay. These are some jade babies that I propagated. This is one of my favorite plants, Syngonium ribbon. And I love the leaf shape. I love the coloration of these leaves. I think this one is so cute and just really different looking. Really unique looking. Maybe because it's clean and these ones aren't, I don't know. Then we get to some of my bigger plants. This is another cutting I took from the Lowe's Sport Variegated Monstera. And that's the new leaf, especially with these lime green variegated ones. You can't really see the variegation until they've hardened off, but I guess I kind of, I think that one's going to be pretty cool. In front here, we have a Ficus Elastica Burgundy. Ooh, needs cleaned. And this is my Norfolk Island Pine. This side does look pretty sad. I think because I had it turned this way. I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure where to put this one to make both sides equally happy, but I was just trying to even it out a little bit by turning it around this way and seeing if that helps. And then if not, I'll reevaluate and move it somewhere else. On this little side table, I have terrarium with some living sphagnum moss potted in it and put a little clover that I found in another plant. I actually really love clovers like this, like can't resist popping the seed pods if any of you guys have done that. So I thought I'd grow one in there and then I can pop the seed pods and it's fun. This, houses some of my dairy cow isopods. I scaped the back of this with moss that has grown in pretty well. Well, there's some dead spots, but the parts that have grown in have grown in pretty well. And this right here was another scraggler plant that I found growing in another potted plant. It is kind of taking over. The leaves are getting really big and I'm glad it's happy in there. This is kangaroo fern, also a scavenger plant that just randomly popped up one day. Oh my gosh, wow, okay. So a few days ago, I filmed a video of this exact leaf and it was like half the size, that's kind of cool. I'm gonna put that, that on here too, but it grows so fast. I like kind of can't believe it. To help keep the humidity up for this, I've started watering through the top enough so that there's like this much water at the bottom. And that seems to do the trick with keeping it in just regular household humidity. So far, I think that, that that was the trick. The last plant in this room is Bonnie spider plant right here. It has a lot of babies, a lot of brown leaves because I accidentally let it dry out too much recently, but I'll get those pulled off and it'll be just fine. It really is pushing out just so many little spider babies though. So I think it's gonna be cool sitting right here and they can all kind of hang down. It'll kind of overtake this whole side table. So that's what I'm hoping for with that one. But okay, so. Those are all of my plants. I hope you enjoyed this house plant tour. I will see you next week with a repot and chat that's Halloween themed, like the good old days. I'm really excited for that, so check back next Monday. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!